Sri Lanka's plans for becoming 100% organic have had somewhat of a rocky start, with significant opposition to the move, primarily led by chemical fertilizer lobbyists. The main argument is that the government may not be able to supply farmers with enough organic fertilizer ahead of the upcoming Maha season, which could spell disaster for a country already facing some shortages. To deal with this, an order was placed with Chinese manufacturer Qingdao Sivin Biotech Group for a shipment of 99,000 metric tons of what was supposed to be high-quality organic fertilizer. However, sterility tests on samples of the proposed shipment by Sri Lanka's National Plant Quarantine Service showed high levels of harmful Avinia and Bacillus bacteria, which, if used, could have led to serious post-harvest crop losses. Despite protests from the Chinese company, the shipment was cancelled by the state-owned Ceylon Fertilizer Company, who informed the company in writing that the 12,000 metric tons en route to Sri Lanka did not conform to the conditions of the contract. Even though some may call this a close shave, in some way this seems to be somewhat of a blessing in disguise. Following the rejection of the Chinese shipment, the government then moved to order 3.1 million litres of what has been termed third-generation nanonitrogen liquid fertiliser, manufactured by India's IFCO Nanobiotechnology Research Centre, of which the first 100,000 litres arrived in Sri Lanka early this morning. The initial shipment was airlifted by the government from India, and distribution is set to be fast-tracked while we await the delivery of the remaining order. However, there are many unknowns about nanonitrogen, especially its benefits, in comparison with regular urea which has been the mainstay of Sri Lanka's farmers for decades. According to information from the Indian Farmers Fertilizer Cooperative Limited, its manufacturer, Sri Lanka's farmers can look forward to lower costs, higher yields, greater coverage, and most importantly, an increase in incomes. In terms of coverage, where previously farmers would require up to two bags of urea per acre each season, according to IFCO studies, this will change to just one litre of nanonitrogen liquid. The equivalent of one 50 kilogram bag of urea is just 500 millilitres, which highlights just how much concentrated nitrogen this contains. Further, with input and storage costs too coming down drastically, Indian farmers who use nanonitrogen liquid have also reported up to 8% higher yields as well. In addition, nanonitrogen also promises to be a more sustainable solution compared to conventional urea, which only has a 30 to 50% effectiveness in delivering nitrogen to plants, while the balance leaks into and contaminates soil and water systems. Studies have shown nanonitrogen to have a delivery effectiveness of a highly impressive 80%. Further, aside from improving yields, soil health, and nutritional quality, nanonitrogen has also passed global guidelines for biosafety and toxicity developed by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. However, the other main benefit of switching to nanonitrogen liquid remains in massive cost savings to the state. To put it into perspective, Sri Lanka would have had to spend a whopping 32 billion rupees to import the required durya for the Maha season. However, according to the Agriculture Department, bringing down this quantity of nanonitrogen liquid costs only 9 billion rupees, giving it a massive 23 billion rupee saving. This makes it without a doubt Sri Lanka's best option at present. Close up ever fresh toothpaste. Pay a dollar, Dakwa, never move a kapasa up within.